Enos are being used in many fields of science. Lots of research are progressing on the use of Enos to assess sensory quality as well as food quality and safety. We have initiated our research on the applications of Enos through SQEA collaborative project. We have first explored the parameters or the factors affecting the ENO signals and their stability. In this video, we'll show how we are planning to use ENOs for assessing microbial spoilers of fish during storage at different temperatures. However, we'll make another video explaining the significant parameters need to be maintained for operating a stable ENO system. Team members are Dr. Nasser Al Habsi, Dr. Zahir Al Atabi, and Dr. Ismail Al Belushi, and Mr. Hitam Al Huti. First, I would like to explain the similarity of the recognition of volatiles by the human olfactory system and the electronic nose or E nose. In the case of humans, volatiles first enter into the nose during breathing and the olfactory. Olfactory is placed on the roof of the nose. In the case of humans, suction is the breathing. Interaction between the volatiles and olfactory creates signals which are then travel to the brain through the nervous system. Brain then analyzes the signals in relation to the earlier experiences stored in the memory and finally gives a response on the characteristics and intensity of the volatiles. Similar process is also used by the ENO. The ENOs. Volatiles are sucked into the ENOS board and then travel to the ENOS sensors. Interaction of the volatiles with ENO sensor create electrical signals which are then passed computer and analyzed. In this case, the classification system in the computer works as the human brain. In this slide, you can clearly see the similar components of both human and ENO systems. Nose in humans is the same as suction port in the ENO system. In humans, breathing or sniffing suck the volatiles and in the ENOs, artificial pump is used to suck the volatiles. Olfactory in humans is the same as the sensors in the ENO systems. Brain in the humans is similar to the computer in the ENO systems. However, building emotion in a computer is a challenge, although future robots could have a certain degree of emotional components. In this slide, I am explaining the ENO's operation. It contains three major systems. First one is the sample holding system. Second one is the array of the sensors. And the third one is the pattern recognition system based on the computer. Eno system first sucks air or standard gas to clean the sensors. That is all absorbed volatiles are removed from the sensors. It is called the first part. In this case, the sample suction port must be closed. After cleaning those systems, take the initial reading and considers it as reference. Room air is more commonly used as reference. After these readings, the air suction port is closed. In the second stage, volatiles from, volatiles from the air space of the sample are sucked and transport it to the sensor array. It is the sample suction. In the third stage, air or standard gas needs to be used to clean the sensors. It is the second part. I would like to discuss few important aspects of ENOS. First, duration of each suction period needs to be optimized 
based on the types of samples. In addition, humidity in the head space gas needs to be filtered or desiccated before sending to the sensors array. We have developed different protocols and systems to remove humidity from the head space gas during its suction. Second, time to generate volatiles in the head space also need to be optimized. The concentration of volatiles in the head space depends on the head space volume. Therefore, it is important to keep it as minimal as possible. We have also developed different sampling systems to avoid humid air from the head space. It is important to know whether there is any volatile masking and any poison gas to the sensors. It is necessary to explore and identify for the better sensitivity and specificity of the sensors. Increasing the numbers of sensors will not have any benefit if sensors specificity does not vary. It is good to have each sensor has a specificity of different volatiles. This could be checked from the low correlations between the sensor's signals. Since high correlations between the sensors ind indicate all sensors are sensitive to similar types of volatiles. The project will be progressed into four stages of measurements and analysis. First, signals of the 32 sensor will be collected when fishes are stored at 0 degree C, that is ice, and 20 degree C, that is room temperature. It will be performed over a period of storage time. In this case, variations of the sensor's responses and their correlations with the storage time will be assessed. In addition, correlations between sensors will be assessed to determine the, the sensitivity and specificity of the sensors. In the second stage, we'll explore whether ENO signals could be used to discriminate the fish samples while stored at different periods. In the third stage, We'll explore the possible correlations between the types of microorganisms and their populations with the ENO signals. In the fourth stage, types and concentrations of the volatiles will be measured by GCMS and then attempts will be taken to develop their relationship, relationships with the ENO signals. Hi, marine fish is spoiled by certain type of microflora, which we call it trimethyl amino oxide producers and hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, uh, hydrogen sulfide producers. Those type of group of microflora, they produce certain type of gases such as H2S, which is responsible for the putrid odor and the trimethyl amine which is responsible for the fishy odor. Now the conventional technique to enumerate to assist the spoilage of those fish is to enumerating the, those two group of microflora using the conventional methods such as plates and we need to incubate those plates for certain time of period then we need to identify the bacteria using commercial chain or commercial techniques such as Vitec. The main disadvantages of those techniques, those techniques are time consuming, those techniques need for example more resources and need more labors. On the other hand, we have the ENOs which can detect the certain gas which are responsible for the spoilage such as, such as H2S. So by using the ENOs, we can find a convenient a reliable, a fast and accurate tools that can detect the spoilage of fish in the commercial base. Commercial base. 
Thanks. Okay, hi Tom. Today we are going to have an experiment about the uh, uh, using electronic uh, nose uh, uh, with the fish and uh, <coughs> to measure the uh, volatile. Now I would like you to talk about your uh, uh, MSc uh, project. Uh, thank you. I am Haytham, a uh, student. I'm working in the application of electronic nose to determine the spoilage of fish. Uh, confectional methods of determining fish spoilage use total uh, bacterial count, uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, producing bacterial count, 3 methyl amine uh, uh, oxide uh, reducing uh, bacterial count. Uh, also, so there is a volatile uh, compound uh, such as 3 methyl amine and uh, sulfur compounds. Uh, which are also commonly measured by gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Uh, the samples uh, preparation of the confectional method are very uh, simple, complex and it takes longer time to analyze, to analyze, to analyze the uh, samples. In addition, these uh, methods need uh, chemicals. Uh, instruments uh, are uh, costly and these need uh, skill to operate. Moreover, uh, these are uh, not possible to take uh, in the field, therefore uh, not portable. Uh, Electros is a new technology, it is operation uh, is simple and does not uh, need any chemical. In addition, it is highly uh, portable, it's uh, much cheaper than uh, gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Uh, in this work, I will uh, show, I will uh, store fish in ice and at room temperature and until detection by sensorial uh, analysis. Volatiles in the uh, headspace will be uh, measured by electric nose as a uh, function of storage uh, time. Initial study showed that uh, an in electric nose signals uh, significantly increased uh, with the storage time. Signals from 32 sensors uh, will be analyzed uh, by principal component analysis, PCM, and other uh, classification uh, techniques. First, electric nose uh, signals will be uh, correl uh, correlated uh, with the types of uh, volatiles as, major, uh, as measured by gas chromatography mass spectrometry. In addition, electronic noise signal will be correlated with the types of uh, microbes and their uh, population as uh, determined by confectional bacterial counts. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Nasser will uh, show us how this uh, how the e -nose will work. Thank you. As you know, the e nose involve uh, an array of uh, different uh, gas sensors and a pattern recognition system able to detect uh, and distinguish a specific odor. In a complex sample, the e nose uh, we are using contain uh, 32 polymer based on uh, sensor. Sensor sensitivity vary with the types of odor. The, the first step uh, involves the sampling of the, the gas uh, mixture from the headspace of the uh, sa sample. Uh, entering with the uh, syringe uh, and or the carrier gas and inject into the uh, detector the, inject, uh, the injected uh, volatile are then allowed to in, uh, interact with an array of the sensory uh, generating uh, signal to be uh, processed by patent recognition program now uh, according to the experiment as i have told you uh, uh, item uh, we have the uh, the the, uh, the device that uh, uh, the, suck the, the the volatile here uh, first of all we do first of all we do the conditioning from the conditioning where the air entering from this side and coming to the other side and once it, uh, it is ready then uh, as you remember that we are going to uh, we, we have set a parameter that uh, uh, is going to be in the uh, our uh, project so you remember uh, we have the baseline uh, time for the baseline Okay, and uh, how long is this, the sample need to be uh, sucked? Uh, 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. So here, uh, first of all, we'll uh, put this, uh, the sample in the, in the container, the plastic container, and we have designed this uh, container in such a way. Uh, we have a hole here uh, where, where we'll insert the, uh, the, uh, the syringe. And um, uh, we have done a pre preliminary uh, work to calculate how long it takes to generate the volatile in the headspace. Yeah. And we have decided to be uh, one, hour. one hour. So here, um, and also from the interval, we interval we uh, the, the, the hole here will be closed. So how we can do here is just to insert, once it is ready, we insert the syringe into the, the plastic container. 
and the, the device will start uh, sucking the, uh, uh, the volatile going to the device and uh, from there uh, to the system. Uh, we are going to pre repeat this uh, five times uh, uh, and then uh, we'll take the information or, or the data to the Excel sheet and to do a further analysis as you have mentioned the CCA. We have seen Victor Nasser explaining how electronic noise is working with the research project on fish spoilage. Uh, this is a, a, another part explaining um, how to identify the volatile scumbag. Basically, gas chromatography is the tool used to quantify and identify the volatile compounds of different food aromas, plus also used to identify the spoilage volatiles. In order to um, identify the aroma of fish spoils, basically we have, well, we're going to use the solid phase micro extraction technique. We have the SBME manual and we have different fibers in this uh, technique. Basically, you have to optimize the SBME to select the appropriate fiber. Plus, you have also to optimize the right time temperature for extraction. So in this case, we're going to leave the fish for one hour in order that the headspace is accumulated with the volatile compounds. And after that, we're going to expose the SBME for almost 20 minutes in order to uh, absorb the volatiles with the SBME. After 20 minutes, we will take the SBME and we will expose the SBME to the GC injector. After we retract the SBME inside the, uh, the manual, uh, the SBME uh, manual, this is the GCMS. As you can see, this is the auto sampler. What we will have to do, this is a manual injection. So we have to remove first the auto sampler, and then we directly inject the SBME into the GC injector and as you know that the injector normally is heated up so there is different parameters you have to set first accordingly to the uh, analysis you plan to do so you have to set the temperature of the injector plus the airflow as well so we will leave the SBME uh, fiber inside the injector for a couple of time like 10 to 15 minutes in order of all volatiles to be run through the column inside the, the, uh, the GC. So after 10, 15 minutes, we take out the SBME and the process will continue. So the volatile separation will be inside, this is the SBME oven, uh, sorry, this is the GC oven, where inside we have the column and inside the column volatiles will be separated. And after separations, we go to the detectors. At the end, we will have the chromatogram showing on the softwares that we have attached to the GCMS and we can identify and quantify these compounds. I would like to thank all team members working on the possible applications of ENOS to the food industry.